Alright guys, so Fuller coming to you with another video. Shout out to the whole LDBC. And you know, um, in this video, man, I kind of want to do the same thing I did uh, about Patrice Lumumba. Um, you know, it was on January 17th that we were celebrating the death of Patrice Lumumba, who was one of our giants, one of Africa's giants. So on this day, man, there's another African giant that we have to celebrate the death of, um, who's deep, deeply uh, rooted with, especially my family, man. Uh, he he pretty much, uh, you know, him, he pretty much got us out of a rut, you know what I mean? Um, and that is Emil Carr Cabral. For those of you guys who don't know, Emil Carr Cabral is what you call a... Um, basically a uh, one of Africa's great thinkers man like I mean this guy was ahead of his time uh, I mean when I say ahead of his time he was way ahead of his time basically I mean this this guy um, you know he had a plan for like unlike other revolutionaries I would say that he had a plan that was um, designed to carry on after the fighting, after the, 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 you know, the physical fighting. And that's what I think really separated him from the, um, the other revolutionaries, you know. Um, you know, my dad had the privilege of fighting under him, um, in, uh, working under him in Senegal because there was, uh, We'll get to what this means. Uh, there was a PAIGC headquarters located in Senegal. And then, as a matter of fact, he was even planning on building um, like a school in, in Senegal, um, you know, and that's, that's just the reality, man. He, um, he, he, I mean, I, th this guy was a giant. I mean, in every sense of the word. He was ambitious, but very quiet in his ambitions, but let's get to it, man. So, Amilcar Cabral, he was born um, in Guinea-Bissau, and basically he was born to, um, I believe his parents were Cape Verdean, and, you know, his mother was a, um, she, she would do, like, menial jobs, like, like doing house care and things like that and working cleaning houses and whatnot and his dad I think um if I'm not mistaken his dad was in the um the field of education you know um so you know him him seeing his mom struggle under the colonial um way of living you know that left an impact on his life you know because he was uh they they were they would struggle to make ends meet. They would struggle to um, basically afford the basic necessities, you know. Um, but the thing is, is Amilcar Cabral was so smart, you know. Um, you know, he was very very smart, um, and with with that being said, his intelligence carried him enough to get him a um, education in um, Portugal because Portugal at the time was the colony, um, the colonial power of Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde, you know, so what happened is he was smart enough to, um, you know, basically get a colonial education. So what happened is that, you know, he he, he went to Portugal, you know, um, and, you know, he would do his education. I mean, he was ahead of his class. He was very, very intelligent guy. He went to school for agronomy, the, the um, agricultural engineering. I'm not going to even front, man. When he, he's the one who inspired me to um, do agronomy, man. I'm, I, I can't even lie to you, you know. Um, so that's what got me into it, you know, very heavily. And that's what got me into horticulture, uh, botany, and things like that. I'm not going to even lie. But anyhow, 
you know, when he was in school in Portugal, you know, they, they were still under a colonial system very much, you know. Um, it, with the colonial powers, you know, th their main thing is to divide and conquer. Like, I mean, and, and they will do this based off of the intelligence of, you know, us Africans, based off of our tribe, based off of our customs. They will find any means necessary to divide us. So, you know, what happened was Amilcar Cabral, in a way, he was kind of privileged because he, he got a... Um, he, he got a the colonial education, right? But this plan really backfired on the Portuguese, you know, because what happened is that, you know, Amilcar Cabral, he, um, he met other like-minded people who, you know, who often pondered, like, what Africa would be like if it was independent, self-sufficient, and really designed to help its people, you know, because at the end of the day, Portugal was just exploiting Guinea-Bissau, Cape Verde, Mozambique, San Tome, um, what else would other colony did Portugal have in Africa, um, I think there was one more but I can't think of it right now but I mean all all of these colonies were just exploitation you know they I mean the resources of the colonies would just go straight to Portugal basically so you know Amilcar Cabral met others who were like-minded you know he met Augustine Neto who oh that's the other colony Angola yes so you know um you know, Amilcar Cabral in school, he met guys who were like-minded, like Augustine Neto from Angola, who would later have the MPLA. Um, he met, um, you know, uh, uh, he met uh, Eduardo Mudain, who would later uh, go on to do the Furlimo in um, Mozambique. And so, you know, when they met each other, you know, they decided, you know, and and wrote poetry amongst each other about like the colonial um, impact on the African continent and they actually got together and, you know, were brainstorming ways on how to, you know, stop this, how to take their countries back, you know. So at the same time, Emil Cargabral, I just want to throw this out there, he was a hell of a soccer player. I mean, if he wanted to, he could have went professional. You know, that's how good he was. He, he was very, very good. He had the sauce when it came to soccer. But um, here's the thing to take from what I just said. These guys probably literally started in the library. And it resulted into big movements okay so this is these are my woke people these are the guys who I consider woke I don't consider like people like a polite or Omar Johnson a nature boy and them woke because I mean it, there's no actions to show that they are there's none you know these guys started with nothing and it grew to something you know it grew to something that was lasting for quite a while. But anyhow, so, you know, um, Amilcar Cabral, what happened was um, he, he would, um, you know, go on to graduate in agronomy. And, you know, he ended up working for the, um, the, the I want to say the, um, the, the, Portuguese uh, administration, colonial administration. I mean, um, he worked in different countries. I mean, he worked in uh, Guinea-Bissau. But the thing is, you know, he 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 made a front, uh, a sports club, you know, in Guinea-Bissau. But you know, the they have something called the PI. D E the and that's like the Portuguese secret uh, police. 
they got suspicious because the sports club was really a front for anti-colonial activity. So he got kicked out, you know, he got barred from Guinea-Bissau for a while um, because of that. And, you know, he actually um, was one of the founding members of uh, Augustine Neto's MPLA, which is in Angola. You know, he was one of the guys who actually was the mastermind behind it. So here you here, here you have a guy, you know, a Guinean Cape Verdean who's interested in Angolan affairs. And, you know, that's a lesson to all of us Africans that, you know, we need we we need uh, our affairs is not too much different from the next man affairs in the different part of Africa, you know, and that's just the reality of the whole the whole situation, you know. That's just that's just how it that's just how it goes, you know. So we we kind of gotta like, although we do have different tribes and different customs, we we still have the same problems, man. At the end of the day. Now, what happened was, you know, Amilcar Cabral just saw what colonialism was doing, how it separated, how the Portuguese would favor a certain tribe. So that tribe can say, oh, well, you know, we like the colonial, we like the colonial powers. We're, we're doing well, or, or, or let's just say, Oh, we eaten, as they say. So he did that, like, and you know, Guinea Bissau is made up of many, and Cape Verde too is made up of many different groups. You have Matizos, you have Balantas, you have Manjakas, you have Fulas, you have Mandingas, you have the, all these different groups, right? So you know, the Portuguese, what they would do, I mean. And unfortunately, this has left the impact on Cape Verde so much, you know. Um, you know, Cape Verdeans, you know, not, I'm not saying all of them, I mean, but some who have benefited from the, the, um, the, the colonial powers and stuff, some will, will just straight out dismiss their their African origins and just say, no, you know, I'm Port Portuguese, you know, I'm not African, I'm Portuguese, like, like, get these Africans off the island, you know, they call, they have a slang called, um, uh, manjak, and that's the word for African, and you know, with 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 my family, you know, those who moved there, you know, from our um, situation, a um, while back, what, way before I was even thought of, you know, we're Fula, you know, by tribe, and we still kept our tribal language and stuff, so we just stayed out the way, man, because, like, sometimes, like, you know, I'm not saying it's all the time, but sometimes, you know, mainland Africans get a bad reputation in Cape Verde. You know, some get very bad reps. And so that's why these prejudices come up sometimes. But at the same time, like, I mean, why, why would you want to call yourself like Portuguese and these people? I mean, the, the, I mean they're savage, bro. Like, I mean... Why would you want to even affiliate yourself with, with such a savage people? I'm going to get to why they were savage, okay? I'm going to get to the, you know, I'm going to get to that right now. All right. So, you know, um, Amilcar Cabral, what he did is because of his agronomy, he was able to walk the land, see the reality of the land, but also talk to the local people about what their issues were. Talk to the local people and tell them like, well, you know, is there, what is the problem? And if, if, if I had the solution, would you be open to this solution? You know, if I, if I had something better to offer you, would you be open to to this offer, you know, so basically what he did is he, he, he talked to the locals, you know, he was on the ground level talking, asking them like what, what 
what do you think these problems are, you know, and what have you. And so that's, I mean, that's how really the movement PARGC started. I mean, it started from the bush, you know, I mean, you had guys who were like often illiterate, who were often peasants, who were often just from the lower classes of society, you know, and, um, and, and so, yeah, man, he recruited people from all walks of life, from all tribes, and that's the main genius behind them, man. You had the Criollo from um, Guinea-Bissau, the Criollo from Cape Verde, you had the Fula, Manjak, Manding, you had all these tribes into one, into one unified movement of course it wasn't easy but he managed to do it and they basically were on the same page and so what happened was you know um you no longer had that you know you you had like cape verde embracing their africanness like or, or and rediscovering their africanness under amilcar cabal because even him he said, you know, we have to refer ourselves to what we are, Africans, you know, and so that's, that's what happened. And so what happened was, Milkar Cabral seeked help he, uh, to set up military reconnaissance. Uh, he had a PIG head, PAIGC headquarters in Guinea Conakry. He had another one in Senegal as well. Um, you know, um, with that being said, we have to, we have to, um, we have to, like, understand that he was, um, forward thinking. So, you know, what he would do is not only would they be trained in guerrilla combat and things, they would be trained in, like, education. I mean, of course, People want to label Milkar Cabral as a Marxist, but he wasn't a Marxist. He was just a guy who was seeing what best worked for his people at the time. Um, and some of those, some of his theories led up with Marxism, basically, you know. So what he would do is he would send certain soldiers like for training in different parts i mean he because mao mao was in china uh he was sending to china um cuba of course um north africa i believe algeria he sent some people tunisia morocco because at the time there were um there, there were um they were even on board with being African more so than um, what they are right now, you know. And so what happened is, like little by little, Amilcar Cabral was gaining territory from the colonial people because you have to understand this. He tried to go to the UN in a very formal, very nonviolent, pacifist manner. Like, he tried to tell him, like, you know, that this colonial administration is not doing anything for us. It's, like, just taking us backwards. We need to be free, right? So, that didn't work. I mean, there was even a massacre of, of striking workers, you know, by the Portuguese. So, armed struggle was the only choice he had. So, what he did is, um, you know, he fought guerrilla warfare and would just take territory little by little little by little um you know and i want to say that he had help i mean he went the cubans were of course there helping him you know the soviets sent weapons there to help him you know the cubans you know fidel castro che Guevara. They thought very, very high of Amilcar Cabal. They thought very high of this man. Um, they really said this guy has a, 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 a clear, lucid um, frame of mind about what he wants for his, um, what he wants for his country. We're going to help him, you know. 
And so, you know, the bush fighting just intensified. And the Portuguese were just spread out throughout their colonies because even at the same time in Portugal, you had upheasals because Portugal itself was backwards at that time. It was the poorest of the Western European countries. So even then, you know, there were there was upheaval in Portugal. So if there's upheaval in their own country, what makes you think that they're able to manage other colonies, you know, if they can't even take care of their own country? So it spread Portugal very thin. And, you know, because it was spread very thin, they had no choice but to grant it in grant uh, Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde independence. So once independence happened, this is the sad thing that we must say. That Amilcar Cabral, he didn't get to enjoy and see the day of independence because, unfortunately, with the CIA's assistance with Portugal's uh, go um, go ahead he was murdered in Guinea Conakry before independence you know so he was not able to see his dream carried out basically he was murdered by people who are dis who were dissatisfied by their positions in the PIGC and so the Portuguese secret police were able to recruit them easy and so he was shot dead you know and yep he was killed and unfortunately because of his death it kind of just made everything spiral down you know everything just spiraled and downward um, he had a lot of plans you know he was going to build a school in Dakar Senegal even um, and he wanted my dad to be a part of the um, which we'll call it the the administration of that school but it, it, those plans were never carried out and so you know after his death, um, I mean, shortly, the vision that he had was lived on very shortly, but not that much. Um, you know, what happened was that um, Guinea Bissau and Cape Verde, they were actually, and Guinea Conakry as well. Um, there was actually talk that, you know, Sekutori, the leader of Guinea Conakry at the time, wanted to just bring Guinea Bissau and Cape Verde into one country. And Amilcar Cabral kind of wanted to bring Guinea Bissau and Cape Verde into one place, you know, and just have it one, like, have those three countries unified together. But um, when that was getting signed off on, there was a coup d'etat in Guinea Bissau, so it kept, kept that from happening. You know, so it never happened. That's why they're still separate to the today, you know. But um, there's a lot of things that can be learned about Amilcar Cabral. You, there's a lot of books available about him that should be read, you know. And yeah, it, you know, um. The theme is, is that, you know, all African leadership that does not play into the hands of imperialism is more or less going to be murdered or likely to be ousted by imperialism itself. Amilcar Cabral was no exception to this rule. But he did leave behind a lot, you know, of great things. And it's, it's good sometimes, it, you know, I find it cool when I talk to like another Cape Verdean and he just say I'm black, I'm African, I'm proud you know, my Amilcar Cabral put this in me, you know I, 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 I can appreciate that versus me talking to one who says no, you know I'm Portuguese, I'm you know, I'm more European than African because the paternal um, 
the, 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 it's usually the slaves brought to Cape Verde, you know, they were, they were women, so, you know, um, I'm, 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 I'm paternally European, this, that, and the other, but, um, yeah, some will go into a whole spill on why, you know, they're Portuguese and stuff like that, and I, all I can say about that is, you know, may God help us all, basically, you know, and that we still have a long ways to go, you know, we still have a long ways to go, but I'm hoping that through studying the life of him, we can have an idea of where to go and how we want to get there, you know. But that's all I got for now, guys. Again, shout outs to the whole LDBC. This is Fula with some non sports talk that I will occasionally bring you guys, so don't be surprised, okay? Fula Sports, as I said, is more than sports, it's way more than sports. In fact, Fool of sports can be called life because life is like a sport at the end of the day and you got to play it on different fronts but that's all I got for now guys Inshallah.